A common trope we see in the first-person shooter genre is that of the exploding barrel. You know the type. The unmistakable, cylindrical design, the red or orange coloration, and the muscle memory that causes you to fire at it whenever enemies group up near one. Last week you all voted, and the fusion coil came out on top, so for this week's mini-evolution, name still pending, we're going to be taking a look at Halo's popular exploding barrels, the evolution of the fusion coil. Before we do that though, it's time to pay the bills. This video was made possible with Skillshare. Skillshare is one of the world's largest communities dedicated to learning or growing your own list of skills. The service is updated on the regular with topics that range from video production all the way to game development. There are classes even dedicated to getting you started in the Unreal Engine, such as Designing Open World Landscapes by Greg Wandra, which is mighty nice since I'm in the process of learning the engine myself. Whether you're looking to level up in your career of choice or discover Cover that for yourself. Skillshare is easy to use, completely ad-free, and new premium classes are added each week to check out. The first 1,000 people to use my link to join Skillshare will receive a free month to explore the service for yourself and see if something interests you. The link is, of course, down below. A thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring the video, and now, let's get to the discussion. First appearing in Halo 2, the Fusion Coil, or as it was sometimes called, Fusion Core by Bungie, came in a few forms. The first form was the UNSC Fusion Coil. It was a small rectangular box with a Death Star-esque grating on the side that glowed a hot gold. Not much was known about these mysterious volatile containers outside of the UNSC using them to transport radioactive materials, isotopes, and plasma. They weren't actually featured in the campaign, only appearing in a handful of multiplayer maps where they would transition to a red color before detonating when disturbed. The second form was in the Forerunner Power Cores. These were more or less the same as their UNSC counterparts, although they had a more boxy, hourglass shape to them, and were designed in that familiar, brutalist Forerunner style. Some of these fusion coils were even converted into anti-vehicle mines on certain multiplayer maps by the Forerunners, identifiable by their now unique pyramid shape. While the Forerunner fusion coil was a home run for Bungie in Halo 2, the UNSC fusion coil needed a bit of work. It was a very modest design for such an explosive container, and this was something that Bungie wanted to fix in their follow-up game, Halo 3. In a weekly blog to their community on the 6th of April 2007, Bungie updated the fans on the development of Halo 3 and gave them a sneak peek at the next generation of fusion coils. This design was more detailed and more explicit about its explosive properties thanks to a healthy helping of warning stickers on the side and an ominous hum when standing too close. Their explosion effects also saw an increase in quality, upping the visual drama with some great use of bloom and smoke effects. Shrapnel would also shoot all about the environment. For the Forerunner fusion coil, very few changes were actually made to its silhouette. Mostly, the adjustments were made to the details of its body, bringing up the visual fidelity and making it look better and richer than ever before. The new design for the UNSC fusion coil was so solid that this went on to become the standard look for UNSC fusion coils going forward, with future games like Halo Reach straight up reusing the design, only tweaking the details and the colors, making the contents of the coil a dark green, and improving the explosion and smoke effects. While the UNSC fusion coil was thriving, its forerunner brother mostly faded into obscurity as it was absent from Halo Reach. The two fusion coil brothers would reunite once again, however, in the new developer, 343 Industries' first title, Halo 4. The UNSC fusion coil of Halo 4 used the Reach model, albeit with lower quality materials and some rather odd texture glitches. While the Forerunner fusion coil saw a complete makeover, ditching the hourglass look and getting a new design more inspired by Halo 4's revamped art style for the Forerunners and their equipment. Like many things in Halo 4, unfortunately, due to a lack of experience as well as restraints caused by the aging hardware, the physics and explosion effects of the fusion coils had to be downgraded from previous incarnations. Now, for the 2014 remake of Halo 2, Halo 2 Anniversary, the fusion coil went in two quite different directions. Rather than make a new, high-quality asset, the campaign opted to straight-up reuse the Halo 4 Promethean fusion coil, with its light simply being changed from orange to blue and the body elongated slightly. Now, for the multiplayer, you're probably expecting the same thing, right? Surprisingly, the multiplayer for Halo 2 Anniversary saw a completely new model created. 
This model was a Promethean version of that classic hourglass design. It was the UNSC fusion coil this time around that saw the reused asset just straight up using the Halo 4 fusion coil, texture glitches included. The multiplayer for Halo 2 Anniversary also saw a unique UNSC fusion coil, the EMP coil that did exactly what it said on the tin, disabling vehicles when detonated. For 343's final entry in the Reclaimer saga, Halo 5 Guardians, many of Halo's iconic legacy designs were modified to fit the art style the game was going for, and that couldn't be more apparent than with the new design for the fusion coils. The UNSC fusion coil for Halo 5 was reimagined as a futuristic cylindrical container that bore very little resemblance to past incarnations. And unlike past incarnations, once damaged, these fusion coils would remain in an unstable state without returning to normal. Now, their forerunner brothers looked even stranger. Taking the term coil may be a bit literally. The forerunner fusion coils of Halo 5 were unrecognizable, looking a bit like, well, a metallic coil of floating parts wrapped tightly around a cylindrical energy field. The Forerunner fusion coils could also be found inside larger energy stations in the campaign and forge mode. A cool artistic detail about these energy stations is when looking at them from above, they resemble a monitor, which is a pretty cool little detail. Now, these two fusion coils were perhaps the most static in the series, having no physics interactions of any kind and sporting rather cheap explosion effects that despawned rather quickly after initiation. This all changed in the latest entry to the Halo series, Halo Infinite, where 343 Industries decided to bring the fusion coils back to their former glory and then some. For the first time in the series' history, fusion coils were not just simple exploding barrels, they were also objects players could pick up and lob at one another. Keeping with the spirit of the game's art style, the design of the fusion coils were quite a bit more familiar to fans of the series, despite them being of different origins. There were no UNSC fusion coils of any kind, rather, a combination of typical Forerunner fusion coils as well as those created by the new enemy foe, the Banished. The fusion coils of Halo Infinite come in four main types. The Banished Blast Coil, which is rather familiar in function to past UNSC fusion coils. The Banished Plasma Coil, which glowed a pale blue and left a pool of superheated plasma on the ground after detonation. The Banished Shock Coil, which glowed a dark blue and contained volatile electrical energy that could disable electronic equipment. And the Forerunner Hard Light Coil, which glowed a cosmic violet and sent waves of disintegrating hard light all about the environment bouncing off any surface it found. The fusion coils of Halo Infinite also saw much of their pre-Halo 4 physics returned, shooting off in random directions before exploding and generally causing unpredictable mayhem when ignited. It was a celebrated return to form, but interestingly, the Halo Infinite fusion coils were not their most recent appearance because in Halo the series on Paramount+, Plus. Fusion coils can be periodically seen throughout the show, such as a memorable cameo in the first episode, where an elite violently detonates one during the Siege of Madrigal. Whether we're on Earth or on an alien world, we can always count on explosive barrels making an appearance for gameplay purposes, and whatever form they take, we can always count on them proudly sporting a name passed down from generation of explosive to generation. The Fusion Coil. What's your favorite incarnation of the fusion coil? What would you like to see me cover next? Within a few hours of the upload, I'll be posting a poll where you can vote for next week's episode. And with that being said, it's time for my impression of a fusion. Nah, I think that joke's a bit played out.